Welcome back to the News at 10. President Muhammadu Buhari hosted three young Nigerians who've been his admirers for some time now at the presidential villa in Abuja today. The children who have at different times reached out to the president in their own little way were accompanied by their parents. One of them had saved up about 6,000 naira from her lunch allowance during the president's campaign in 2015. The president also hosted the Kogi state governor, Yahya Bello, who was at the villa to give the president an update on the situation of things in his state. Our correspondent, Ibrahim Adra, reports. They're as bold and brilliant as they come. Three-year-old Maya Jamal, 10-year-old Aisha Gabi, and Nicole Benson, who is 12. Maya prayed for the president's recovery, while Aisha penned a personal letter to the president describing herself as his biggest fan. Nicole, on the other hand, contributed a little less than 6,000 naira from her lunch allowance during the president's campaign in 2015. It is an excited president, Buhari, that showered encomiums on the children, thanking them while looking forward to seeing them again. Your contribution has made a great impact. <laughs> And uh, we won the election, and here I find myself. I'm very pleased to meet you in person. And for you, thank you very much for your letter, <laughs> which is uh, written in your own handwriting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. I believe we are going to meet. Uh, this is not the last, first and last time we will meet. I hope uh, while I'm here and after I left, I will be meeting you from time to time. Outside, the children said it's a dream come true. I wrote the letter because I like him and my parents during the election, his campaign, they told me to pray for him and he won. I wanted this to be the first time that APC had won and to give them money so that they can win. The trio were not the only president's visitors. There is the Kogi state governor who has been speaking to the president about developments in his state. Yes, How are you? Fine, sir. Good. Yes, sir. He describes Kogi as politically stable and secure. Those workers that are on strike are political civil servants <laughs> that are on strike. The real civil servants are coming to work and we are trying our best to keep, uh, keep up with the payment of salary. Um, there's no denying the fact that uh, the economy is biting hard everywhere. And um, you recall that I met four months salary uh, backlog. I cleared it and today we are keeping up to date. Uh, we are owing August and September as we speak. Um, we are up to date in terms of salary, and those that come to work, we shall pay them. Those that do not come to work, the no work, no pay, we surely apply. Governor Bello asked the citizens to be patient while assuring them that his administration is transparent and will continue to work for the people. From the presidential villa in Abuja, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. Now, just a few hours after Channel's television reported the plight of commuters on the Biase Kalaba Federal Highway in Cross River State, the Minister of Works, Power and Housing has ordered contractors to the site. Our correspondent reports that an alternative route is now being created for motorists to allow the major work on the road to be done. Earlier today, we reported that the road finally collapsed and was no longer motorable for all who planned to use it to connect the northern part of Cross River State to other states in Nigeria. Eyewitnesses told us that the condition of the road got worse three weeks ago after a heavy downpour. Ariguzo Udochuku from Delta State has emerged the Maltina Teacher of the Year for 2017. According to the organizers, Nigeria Breweries PLC, more than 3,000 entries were submitted for the award this year by teachers across the 36 states. Mr. Udochuku goes home with a cash gift of 1 million naira, another one million naira for five years, and overseas training, plus a project in his honor. The state champions got different prizes. Up until now, the guests seated at this event do not have an inclination or idea of who will be crowned the 2017 National Teacher of the Year. The evening starts with a welcome note from the Managing Director of Nigeria Breweries PLC. This year, we achieved a record entry from all the 36 states of the Federation. The strict evaluation process used by the panel of judges aligns with one of our objectives upholding excellent standards for our teachers, which will result in better student performance. 
To set the stage for the awards, state champions, 27 of them, were announced and awarded with a cash gift of 500,000 Naira each. That paves the way for the 10 finalists. From this category, a second runner-up is announced with an additional cash gift of 750,000 Naira. One more to go before the eventual winner is announced. She gets an additional 1 million Naira as the first runner-up. Now to the moment everyone has been waiting for. The finest product, the teacher of the year. And the winner is... Director of studies will tell me, he said the reward for hard work is more work. This is more work. I need to go and work harder and bring out my best. If I find one teacher, if I encourage one teacher, he will inspire another teacher. So, for, so far, we've done about 70 teachers, and that is fantastic. One of the things that you get as a value in life is what gives you prestige. When you have prestige, uh, you are seen on television as being one of the best at what you do, uh, you know, uh, it gives you a certain reward that can be translated into other kinds of value. For the management, one thing is clear. Teachers' reward and recognition has left the heavens and dwells amongst men, encouraging more teachers to do more at their job with greater pride and dignity. Now it's the celebration of a union that works between Nigeria and Italy as SAPEM celebrates its 50th anniversary of operations here in Nigeria. The event tagged SAPEM Fit for the Future attracted guests from the oil and gas sector from within and outside the country. In his speech, the Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum, Dr. Ibi Kachiku, praised the resilience and professionalism exhibited by SAPEM over the years. It's been 50 years of operating in Nigeria with a huge stake in various services in the oil and gas industry, such as drilling, construction engineering, maintenance and more. This is a possible attestation of a great relationship between two nations, Italy and Nigeria. And for this reason, dignitaries are here at the convention hall of the Eco Hotel to be part of history. As far as the managing director of SIPEM Nigeria is concerned, their success story is one they gladly want to sustain. We want to continue to run our business in our usual open and transparent way in consonance with the best practices and standard of quality, safety and integrity. The Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum applauds the capacity of SIPEM to weather the storms in Nigeria and charges them to keep up the tempo. I'm looking to SIPEM to move from contracting to indeed exploration and production. I'm looking to SIPEM to look at what we're doing with refineries. And apart from being contracting companies for refineries, being able quite frankly, to decide to invest in such some of those facilities that are essential for the growth of this country. Various categories of awards and incentives are given to staff who have shown loyalty and excellence in the discharge of their duties as IPEM, including one for the chairman, Mr. Olabode Emmanuel. In the face of the difficulties and investment crisis in the oil and gas industry, the group chief executive officer of SIPEM sees opportunities. We have to reshape ourselves. We have to create the conditions so to start a new cycle of big successes. And indeed, Nigeria is a fundamental base for us and for the future of the company. Nigeria has been a home for SIPEM. This is an Italian company, you know, but a very multinational environment where you have 99% of a workforce, Nigerians, locals, they've been trained by Saipem and you can actually say Saipem is a training ground. At 50, Saipem has tagged the event, fit for the future, a possible indication that so much more is in the offing as the industry giant journeys on to the next 50 years. Let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Melinda Akinlami. You first. First Bank.
Thanks, Ijoma. Welcome to Business News. Nigeria and Ghana have agreed to share information on security as well as research initiatives to secure their coastal areas. This agreement was reached today at the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NMASA, and the Ghanaian Maritime Authority. The Data Scientists Network Foundation in Nigeria wants the country to embrace data science as the latest technology for industrial revolution and economic development. The foundation, at its first data science summit in Lagos, presented the initiative as an alternative for revenue growth. Technology experts, statisticians, programmers, as well as tech enthusiasts have gathered here at the Big Data Summit to explore the latest developments in the evolving world of data science, one of the latest buzzwords in the world of technology. A major driving point for the convener, Mr. Olubayo Adekombi, is for the nation to become a hub for data scientists. What if we build a very powerful hub in Nigeria? Nigerians don't have to go there. And that's what I saw in Bangalore. All we need to do is to democratize knowledge, provide a free platform that can allow people to accelerate their learning, and we're going to see the impact very speedily. Nigeria Statistician General Dr. Yemi Kale, in his presentation, drills down on the relevance of data science for investments. He believes that big data can drive Nigeria's economic development. The economic recovery and growth plan of the government, like many other plans we have had in our nation's history, talks about the need for economic diversification. Can data and data science help to make such diversification possible? Yes, it can, by applying the tools and methods of data science to various types of microdata. As part of strategies to entrench big data in Nigeria, Data Scientist Network Foundation has resolved to train over 150 individuals. They were going to have about 150 young Nigerians from all over the countries who will be hosted in an all expense paid in a learning boot camp where they're going to be exposed to world class machine learning, big data, artificial intelligence tools facilitated by some of the best world class data science is who are flown in to add capacity to our people. When, I say, when we say data is the new oil, we are saying the data is even more valuable than the oil we get from the ground. It is uni it, its use is universal, international. Um, in a few years, oil is no longer going to be as important. We've heard the projection, but information in taking decisions will always, will always, always, always be very important. And the discussions here have shown that data science holds the key to future forecasting as they invest Invention is also presented as an alternative to Nigeria's economic diversification. Strong market fundamentals and optimism of positive third quarter earnings lifted the NSE All Share Index further at the close of Monday's trading session. Chimizi has the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Last week's positive sentiment at the equities market continued today with the banking, industrial and insurance being the major drivers. The positive third quarter earnings posted by UBA helped the banking sector. At the close of trade, the All Share Index went up by 0.33% to close a few steps away from the 37,000 mark. On the prize movement chart, CNI leasing topped the gainers, moving up by 9.55%. On the flip side, Len Africa was number one. In all, investors put in over 2 billion naira to purchase about 215 million shares in 4,262 deals. With UBA and Forte Oil results already in, investors are optimistic other results will be good, and that is expected to translate to more positive trading in the near term. And that was the stock market report. I'm Chimezie Obi Iwago. It's mixed sentiments across board for major world stock markets today, following a combination of political concerns in Europe, inflation data in China, and a record surge on Wall Street. That's it on business news. It's back to you, Joma.
You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Melinda. Still ahead on the news at 10, Super Eagles of Nigeria move up three places in latest FIFA ranking to the 41st position in the world. That's on sports. Please stay with us.